Joanne Irvin. Come on up. Make sure to speak into the microphone, Ms. Irvin. Okay. Um, good evening. My name is Joanne Irvin. I'm a member of CareNet, a regional conservation committee of Sierra Club. But tonight, I ask to speak to you not as an environmentalist, but as a resident of Hawkins County. Last Wednesday, I attended a special meeting of two committees, the Solid Waste and the Environmental Parks Committee, to discuss Mr. Schmelnick's new venture. He will be processing tires, large cement slabs, large blocks of mortar bricks, um, all manner of construction and transport refuse that can be ground up and transported to the landfill. His services are unique and appreciated, and I imagine refuse will be sent to him from a wild swap of Millicent's Tennessee. Once ground up, it will be trucked to the Carson Valley landfill. Um, what I would like to know, and what I hope you will ask each other before voting, is how does this benefit Thomas County? Our landfill is impressively full. Um, it's a lot of new stuff in the roads. And I don't know what the estimated years left it has before it will be shut down. We already recycle tires. Um, the Solid Waste Department has a contract with Liberty Corporation to divert them from the landfills at $163 per ton. The tires are sent for grinding to crumb grade and then used in roads playgrounds. And I found this after I made up my notes here. I just want to uh, read it to you. This is a report of the Tennessee Advisory Commission on Intergovernmental Relations and you can look it up at www.tan.gov slash TACIR, and it was from January of 2020. The current law prohibits counties from shredding tires and disposing of them in landfills unless they can show it would be cheaper than processing them for beneficial end use. And um, we discussed that with Mr. Smolnick at the meeting, and he wasn't sure what he would be charging, but if he does grind them up, he will be grinding them up and they'll be trucked to the landfill. They, he doesn't have the machinery to grind them to a, what he calls a crumb grind. You have 30 seconds, I'm sorry. Okay. Please remember our landfill is a limited resource. It needs to be protected from gratuitous overuse. <coughs> we need to ask, how is Mr. Schmilnick's business a benefit to Hawkins County? And I'm suggesting that tonight's vote on the resolution about the food business be held over until June's commission meeting to explore this question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Schmilnick is here if you want to come on up and, and address us. While he's doing that, um, we found out just recently that there's going to have to be a public hearing on this anyway. So there will not be a vote tonight, but we'll have to go through the public hearing process. Bob, go ahead, sir. Um, make a statement. Sure. Uh, it's your three minutes. Starting now. The concerns about tire shreds in a landfill. Okay, when we were first, we were asked by the state, TDEC, if we were interested in doing this. And I suggested looking into making crumb rubber, we looked into making, as everybody thinks, landscape mulch. And the state said, no, don't waste your time. Because most of those companies fail in the first three years. If you don't have a buyer for the end use product, locally where you have to transport it at a long distance. Okay, at that point, it gets very, very expensive. And if you lose your buyer, then you have no outlook for your product. So the state, TDEC, recommended that we do this process until there is a local source to 
be able to sell that product to. So right now, as per what TDEC, they're not demanding, they didn't tell us we had to. It was a suggestion that we do it in such a way we single shred and landfill. Now, what the landfills do with them? Right now, if they want, they could use them for putting down on their leachate pipe or their gas collection pipes to protect those pipes when they put garbage on them. They can put them in their landfill because once the tires are shredded, it's no longer a tire at C and D. It's construction and demolition material. Okay, it's just just basic work. Okay, um, that's what our that's what our plan has been. That's the model until again, a company such as Eastman Chemical. Eastman is working on a new process for recycling. Right now, they're working on plastic. As time goes on, they will be able to use tire shreds in their process, and they will be able to recycle. Um, you know, a lot of folks think you take a tire and you throw a machine that comes out rubber much. Liberty Tire, which is the largest in the company in the country, they just spent thirty-five million dollars building a new machine down in Atlanta to process the tire. So think about how much money, $35 million, to take a tire and throw it in one end and come out the other end and it's rubber mulch. Okay, I don't know how many of you folks in here use rubber mulch. Do you go to Lowe's and Home Depot and buy it, put it in your playgrounds, do you put it in your, you know, it's, it's, it's an expensive product, it's not really popular. And think about it, whether you're putting rubber mulch in your gardens or you're, you, you know, you're basically still putting tires in your garden. They still break down, they still get brittle, they still crumb, and they still fall into the ground. Okay. Yeah, 30 seconds. Well, 30 seconds. Okay. So we are again, we are not trying to be a burden to the community. We are not trying to overload the local community landfill. We have options. We can take it to other landfills. We have contract with the city of Kingsport already. We can take the product to the city of Kingsport landfill. We'll be more than happy to take it. We don't have to take it up to the public. It's just one of many that we can take into. Any landfill can take it. Okay. Thank you. All right. I have one question. Yeah, go ahead, Commissioner Gill. Uh, yeah, would, uh, are you going to be producing any jobs other than for your sales? Yes. Would there be employees? Absolutely. Do you have an estimate of how many that would be? In, in the beginning, in the very early stages, we'll probably have at least four or five in the yard. But as time goes on, depending again, Eastman, turns around and is able to start taking that shredded product from us and recycling it, then we'll have to put on more people as we put on more equipment and build processes. And then once you know, we can start getting some more business, because part of our business is, and, and, and our business model, is to be able to go out on the public to where there's illegal tire dumps, and they're all over the place, one of the biggest problems that the state said we have, we can actually go out to those sites and clean them up, process the material right there, and, and haul it away. We will definitely need more help. And as our business grows, we're going to start doing mattresses and other items. Thank you, sir. And uh, as we move forward in this, could you produce or bring, provide us with some of the documentation from TDEC that they have conversed with you about doing this, or maybe they write a letter or something for you? But you've told us what the state has told you. Uh, I think it would be beneficial for me and maybe some other commissioners to see some no, documentation of that. All I can do is request. Absolutely. Yeah. I have no problem requesting that data. Like I said, they didn't tell us that this is what we have to do. Yeah. This was their suggestion. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously the state's not going to force us, you know, to, to start a business to do something that we don't want to do. Of course. Yeah. They they make suggestions, and based on their data, based on everything that they're going through and what they see, this is where they made the suggestion. We we built this business without any grant money. If you use grant money in the state of Tennessee. It has to go for recycling. It has to either be crumb rubber, it has to be uh, 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 landscape mold, something of, of that product. Now, if you turn around and you take grant money and you build this business and you start making those products and you lose your buyer, you don't have the ability to sell your product. Okay, and, and the only way you can get rid of this material is to landfill it. The state has the right to come back to you and demand that money be paid back. We're doing this with our own private money, so we don't, we, we're not going to get stuck. We have the option of furthering our business to make more of a recycled product. Trust me, this is not how we really want to do it. This is, right now, as the state is, is asking us if we're interested in doing this, okay, at their suggestion. That's all this was, was a suggestion by the state. But yes, I can get you some, I can get you a letter or something from, from TDEC. There won't be any problem with that. Thank you very much. Any other questions? So your product business 
Yes, sir. Not taxpayer funded at all. 142 Bradley Creek Road, is that private property? I'm sorry? 142 Bradley Creek Road, is that your business's private property? Yes. So you're a private business operating on private property yes, to add value to the economy and local. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Any other questions, Mr. Schmiller? Thank you, sir. Thank you.